Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our uh, daily thought for today. Uh, and incidentally, I do hope that you managed to make it to Sunday Cafe yesterday. Wasn't it fun? It's such a good way just to catch up with people and, and to see lots of faces on the screen. It's absolutely wonderful. I do encourage you to do that, to join in on Sundays at half past 11 for our Sunday cafe. And uh, if you need the password for that, uh, do email me and I can give you the password. Right, now, for this next month of July, we are starting uh, Thoughts for the Day every day on Mark's Gospel and beginning at chapter one, going through to chapter six, okay? And then we'll see where we get to towards the end of July and see whether we continue in August. Uh, so today is Mark chapter one, and verses one to eight. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's written in Isaiah the prophet, I'll send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptising in the desert region and preaching a forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Mark's Gospel is probably the one that, that, that proceeds the fastest. Uh, and often this word immediately comes several times in Mark's Gospel. It's almost as if I want to go from this to this to this to this. You know, so he doesn't waste any time telling you what's coming next. Uh, in uh, sort of uh, golfing terms, he doesn't waggle on the tee before he drives off. He gets straight to it. And one of the things I love about the beginning here is that, is that he tells you exactly what this Gospel is all about. Uh, now, when I pick up a novel, and I'm picking up quite a few novels at the moment, I do like it to tell you almost immediately what the book is about. I like it to get into the plot quickly. I don't like there to be sort of six chapters of kind of waffle before you actually get to the nub of what it's all about. Well, that's just me anyway. But here we have Mark. He says, listen, let me tell you what it's about. It's about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And when he said those two things, it was it was almost an explosion. It's not just about Jesus, you know, a guy that grew up in Nazareth and, uh, you know, he was a carpenter's son. You know, he says, no, 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 this guy, Jesus, is the Messiah and he's the Christ and he is the Son of God. When he says he's the Christ, he means he's the king. He's the one that's going to come and deliver. He's the one that's going to come and save. He's going to be the mighty conqueror. The one that they'd been looking for throughout the whole of the Old Testament. That is him. He's the Messiah. But he's more than that. He's also the Son of God. This is also a divine king. Not just any king, but a divine king. And he says then that this man will is not just a man. He's also the king and he's the divine king. And he is the Lord. Prepare the way, says John, for the Lord. So I love that. This gospel is all about Jesus Christ. And actually our Christian faith is all about Jesus Christ. It's all about a living relationship with Jesus Christ. If nothing else, then today we need to ask the Lord to say, Lord, all I need is a living relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who is my deliverer, my king, and my God. But let me go back to this word, gospel. Because actually, gospel was a word that was used in, in secular language in the Roman times. And a gospel was, was good news. It, it literally means that, well, it's a combination of the words you and, and galleon. And galleon is just news, uh, but 
you is great news. It's great news, this gospel. And they used that term usually to announce something which was going to be life changing, something that was going to be completely earth shattering. So the announcement of the arrival of a new Caesar or maybe the defeat of, the, of, of a foreign army, there'd be good news. It's life changing. It's not just ordinary day to day news. It's life changing news. It's earth shattering. It's going to be the most important news you've ever heard in all your life. And actually, Christianity is good news. It's not good advice. Uh, let me give you an example of that. Uh, you see, I, I was uh, told I had a diabetes type 2. So I go to the doctor and the doctor says to me, uh, Jonathan, you've got type 2 diabetes. So from now on, you must have a strict diet. You must cut out all carbohydrates and sugar. And you must also exercise regularly, do lots and lots of exercise, uh, eat all the right things, and here are some pills for you to take. Now, that is advice, and it's good advice. Uh, and I might ignore that advice, but it is good advice. But that's very different from good news. Good news is if I go into the doctor and he says, Jonathan, I've had all your blood tests back. And your bloods are completely normal now. There's no trace of diabetes in your body. That is good news, not good advice. And actually, the Christian life is good news. It's not good advice. See, often we think it's good advice. In fact, all the other religions in the world is good advice. You must do this. You must do that. If you want to connect to God, if you want to know God, you've got to do this, 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 and this. And that's just good advice. But actually good news is this is what God has done for you. This is the truth about who God is, what he's done, and that he loves you. That's good news, not good advice. So come with us on this journey through Mark and come and learn the, the good news about a God who is our deliverer, our king, and also our God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this gospel and what we need so much at the moment is good news there's so much bad news around and there's a lot of good advice around but that actually sometimes leaves us a little bit uh, flattened but lord we need good news and you lord jesus have all the good news that we need in this life and so we pray lord that we learn from you our king and our god and fill us with exult and joy. Change our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day, guys.